welcome to Copenhagen Fashion Week and the Small Talk Big Conversations program. My name is Musam Shangama. I'm the co-founder of sustainability consultancy Infoturum, and I will be your host for this talk with the Kate Fletcher joining me from London, UK. Hi, Kate. Thank you for being here today. Well, a pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So Kate is just for those who maybe don't know, is a professor at the Center for Sustainable for Sustainable Fashion at University of the Arts London. She is the most cited scholar in fashion and sustainability and her work like that on post growth fashion and fashion localism both defines and challenges the field. Kate is also the co founder of the Union of Concerned Researchers in Fashion and has written and or edited nine books translated into seven languages. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a powerhouse in the field. Now, Kate, you are, as I said, among a group of researchers that are sort of calling to arms for the fashion industry to engage with sustainability in much more sort of radical ways, we could say. Um, why now and what is at the core of this call to arms of your concern? Well, why now? Um, because of the scale and the urgency of the challenge we face. It seems to have that maybe we've forgotten it, but the planet is the system that supports the fashion sector. And maybe we're the first generation to know that we are undermining the ability of Earth systems to support life. Indeed, I think if you look at it, since 1970, so just before I was born, and across the whole, all of my life, biodiversity has reduced by a half. I mean, that's a dramatic reduction. And a recent report by the IPCC, that's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, says that we just had 12 years to turn things around and able to avoid catastrophic climate breakdown. And that was already the best part of three years ago. So we've only got nine years to turn things around. But at the core of our concerns is that the knowledge that the logic of unlimited, unfettered economic growth, which is pretty much the only logic that shapes the activity of the fashion sector and many others, um, but this logic is fundamentally at odds with the finite nature of the resource base, or the base of planet Earth. And the reason why the sector is today in a perilous position, and in fact it's probably in a worse position than 30 years ago, despite the fact that for 30 years we've been working as hard as is possible, we've been using our best efforts, and despite even our best efforts to mitigate the impacts of fashion manufacturing and consumption, since then things are getting worse. And this is because the sector is growing this is the growth logic, it's growing at a pace that outruns the benefits that our green technologies can bring. So effectively, we're calling for more radical action because what we're seeing at the moment just isn't working to affect change. So we need a new logic, a new logic that we suggest puts us first. And now you mentioned sort of both, both knowledge and what we have known or already actually do know in the fashion industry historically one could argue that um, on a sort of an industry level we have been not very adept to incorporating new knowledge, no, new knowledge and looking to academia to sort of understand what needs to be done. How would you and the work that you're doing say that we as an industry can engage much more with research-based knowledge to really understand what we have to do besides sort of the trend level talks on what the industry has to engage with in terms of sustainability? So I, I, I think perhaps what we're doing here is getting to the, the core of the challenge, really. And this is to realise that the way that knowledge is frequently applied is it's very partial. So it's just bits of things. We cherry pick the things that we want to know about or we can see, oh, we could apply that. That's the relevant bit. And of course, maybe that's inevitable that we turn away from those difficult bits of news, the home truths. But by doing that, we're always going to limit our ability to affect change. So there's this incredible uh, techno scientist, a woman called Donna Haraway, 
And maybe to paraphrase her, what we need to do instead is we need to find a way to stay with the trouble, stay with the trouble of all of these difficult messages around, say, we're changing our actions to in the business of sort of planet saving. And this inevitably is going to involve pain, challenge, grief even as we let go of some of those old ways of doing things but it will also bring tremendous opportunities that we can't imagine at the moment so uh my longtime collaborator matilda tam uh, and i have outlined many of these sort of challenges and opportunities for getting together that we uh, think is important for fashion in a publication called earth logic which is available to download download online and what we also think says within within Earth Logic is that the way that research and business activity can begin to really begin to work together is that they need to do this uh, both working on new knowledge together, but they also need to act at the same time. So frequently in the past, research is seen as something that happens before action you know you need to get all the knowledge and then you develop some things write a paper maybe and then industry will figure it out but that is both too time consuming you know we we just don't have that time and it's also divorced from the real world so what we think we need instead is to put knowledge in motion we need new knowledge to be tried out and revised as it's being created and this requires an entirely new collaboration between those who are generating new knowledge and new understanding and those who are applying it. And I mean, now you mentioned, first of all, Haraway's idea of staying with the trouble, knowing that this will be uncomfortable, sort of we will have to do things that we, we that speaks not into our usual understanding of how we operate businesses. But as you also mentioned, collaborating in new ways. Now, earlier on uh, this year in January, Copenhagen Fashion Week launched its sustainability brand, uh, plan that both you and I have uh, been part in. Our company was on the strategic sort of foundation of developing the plan and you were one of the experts giving advice and feedback on it. That is one way maybe potentially of looking at organizing bodies to organize, consider their role in the industry and in the system of fashion in different ways. What would you sort of argue is the potential for that for some of the players in the industry that have not yet taken on their, could we say, full responsibility to engage differently with the fashion businesses in themselves so they don't stand alone and sort of separated in their efforts? So um, I would really agree that the initiative that was put forward as part of Copenhagen Fashion Week earlier this year really presented bold steps towards thinking about what fashion activity might look like in an industry context. And this is, this is what we need. We need people to bring all ideas to the table and then begin to figure out how that they can work together. At a parallel point, alongside initiatives like that. I think what we also need to do is to develop a new approach to governance um, of the sector where we consider really the difficult questions around how the system of fashion is organized and governed so that it can best respond to the, the critical challenges such as climate change, for instance. And that requires that we, we sit with and ask questions around like what are the appropriate decision-making processes? What are the necessary checks and balances? I think maybe we all know that life is political. Of course it is. And the world reacts to what we do. And so it's essential that we find ways to introduce organizing fashion activity that promotes decency, uh, inclusivity, tolerance, and the sharing of power. Um, what systems, I would like to ask us all, what systems can we put in place to commit to more just practices? I think it's essential that we find how we can redistribute power through the fashion system. And then we also think about what, what would we wish our fashion sector world to be, and then find ways to, to create that. And we are, inevitably, we need training and mentorship programs to fast track for example, minority voices in fashion to begin to really think about how these 
these ways could be really able to address in a fundamental structural, even strategic and uh, systemic way, what it is that we're dealing with. Then maybe we might begin to create new indexes for fashion that are based on care, maybe, and health of relationships. And that would be a, a really wonderful, deep and profound transformation. And as you mentioned, this is, this is something that we need to consider on a systemic, on a structural level. I think right now, um, quite a lot of businesses and, and people are aware of the uh, social and political movements going on in the world that are also structural and systemic, um, specifically, for example, connected to racism, to exploitation of uh, minority groups. Um, how, as a business, just from your perspective, would you now go about that then? Because as you said, we actually don't have that much time. We can't just sit in the boardroom and discuss and discuss and discuss and discuss. We need action. So how would you start that move towards a more caring, a more nurturing, a more wholesome, a more, um, a more sort of healthy um, business and industry? Well, I think I would say across uh, the 30 years that I've been working in fashion, textiles and sustainability, my whole trajectory has been increasingly towards more strategic questions, towards looking at the system as a whole. So I started out like most people do thinking about fibers and you know, how on earth can we uh, select more promising materials to reduce impact? And progressively through a journey that's taken me pretty much through every design solution and more. Now, the questions that you end up looking at are questions of culture. Um, because these are at the level of the system, even maybe the level of the paradigm. And I think that what we need to do um, is we need to yeah, spend time, uh, time that is precious and short, but we still need to spend time to check that the overarching uh, frameworks that shape our sector are the ones that we want. I would argue that currently the ones that we have aren't the ones that are leading us towards health. Um, the, it's not a, a fluffy or not a non-hard-nosed way to be, but it's literally, it is hard-nosed to say that we're trying to secure our future. Um, and I think that we need to do that. And then at the same time, you're right, action is absolutely essential. And that's one of the reasons why I think um, using principles like action research, maybe people think, oh, it's just a piece of jargon, but simply what it means is taking action and understanding if that's going in the right way that you want it to at the same time. It's bringing together um, knowledge of uh, change and also knowledge about the system that we're in in a way that's light-footed so that you're nimble uh, and also putting in the right directions but this of course needs to tie up with all of these other issues the for example around racism or sexism or uh, able bodyism or all the other things that we're challenging with these are of course coming together with climate change in one of the big intersectional crises of our times and this is the time for us not only to get educated around issues to do with racism, like many people are, you know, absolutely needing to do. We all are needing to do perhaps at these crazy times that we're, we're living in, but also more than that, we need to think about all the ways that these intersect and build on each other, which they are compounding at the moment. Yes. Now you mentioned, just as a final note, before we are running out of time and will be cut off, um, you mentioned education yourself and the role of that. I see, we new, I see a new generation of designers that are being educated about the industry in different ways, are being educated on the impacts of design, of fashion, of production systems in different ways, and are also hopefully or potentially at least connecting that to this increased social awareness. Are you sort of looking positively towards the future with new generations taking the lead or what is your sort of outlook just on a final note yeah i'm 
I'm optimistic when I look at uh, school strikes. I'm optimistic when I look at what happens when people get together around Black Lives Matter and come out onto the streets. I'm optimistic when new dialogue, uh, new language emerges that begins to help us shape and land our, our ideas better. I think it is uh, about taking bold decisions and it's asking about ways of thinking and associated habits. And am I optimistic? Uh, I am when I look at what an amazing planet we have and how it can uh, respond. And I think it's incumbent on us all uh, to really uh, to embrace that there are seeds of change, seeds of hope and we need to cultivate them. I think that is a beautiful way to end this talk. Thank you so much, Kate, for participating.